NAFTA. And it was Al Gore, the hero of the environmental movement, who was the hatchet man for the Clinton administration to cram NAFTA down the throats of a reluctant Congress. Now, this is a good deal for our country, Larry, and let me explain why. Al Gore, who carried the ball for NAFTA and GATT, is now one of the top standard bearers for the elite's agenda. This, I didn't interrupt you. Okay, now, uh, uh, guys. Uh, now, maybe it just... Is this... NAFTA. Why? Huge numbers of manufacturing jobs left Canada, came into the United States because of a 15% wage differential. We pay our workers less in Canada. Now, when you've got a 7 to 1 wage differential between the United States and Mexico, you will hear the giant sucking sound. No, There's a political lesson, uh, quick, there's a business uh, lesson. Sorry. He serves as the front man for the carbon tax cap and trade scheme, which will not only increase taxes on every American, but will also transfer our national sovereignty and rights to a tyrannical world government, all in the name of saving the earth. Is the legislation that we are discussing here today, is that something that you are going to personally benefit from? If you believe that the reason I have been working on this issue for 30 years is because of greed, you don't know me. I've been willing to put my money where my mouth is. Do you think there's something wrong with being active in business in this country? I am simply asking for clarification I'm proud of, of the it. relationship. I'm proud of it. My name is Dr. Tim Ball. I'm a climatologist. I have a PhD in climatology from the Queen Mary College, the University of London, England. And I've been studying climate both with my nine years in the Canadian Air Force, where it was essential to flying, and then after that at the university. So it, it's essentially been uh, the whole theme of my career. Initially we called climate skeptics, I said, but, but all scientists are skeptics. If you're not a, a skeptic, you're not a scientist. And, and then when that didn't work, then they came out with the charge that we were climate change deniers. And I remember when I was first called a denier, and it was in the Times of London and England. And, um, and of course, the word denier was clearly deliberately chosen because of the Holocaust connotations of that term. So it, it, was, it was not only a, a charge that you were ignoring the truth, but you were doing it in, in a very evil way. And uh, of course, I laugh about that now because my whole career has been anything but a climate change denier. I've spent my career trying to educate people to how much climate change is naturally. So I'm anything but a denier, but of course that, that uh, is part of the politics. Under the Nazis, there was something called race science. They had a lunatic theory of, of eugenics, the Aryan heritage, and all the rest of this. Absolute crackpot pseudoscience. There was no empirical measure or empirical test for the validity of those theories. They simply asserted them, and if you were a professor who stood up to them, then the Gestapo would come and take you away. We are perilously close to such a situation right now. Any academic, any other figure standing up to say the global warming theory of Al Gore is a piece of crackpot nonsense is in danger. You'd be fired from a government job and in many universities your job would be in danger. And of course it's also part of what's called ad hominem that if you can't uh, defeat the person's argument rationally you start attacking the person. And we see that with these terms and we see it with Al Gore calling them flat earthers. Congressman, you began by denying that there is a consensus on the science. There is a consensus on the science. Well, you must have been listening to our testimony that we've had for the last few days with dozens of experts that have come in who have given completely different views. Well, there so are I would, people, I, would I would encourage you to go back and look at the testimony there, this committee's heard. There are people who still believe that the moon landing was staged on a movie lot in Arizona. And neither of us was, are one of those. And I know you like giving those cute anecdotes. This is not a cutesy issue. We're talking about no, that, that can export millions of jobs out of our economy, out of our country. Richard Lindzen, an MIT professor of atmospheric physics, said it many years ago when he said the consensus was reached before the research had even begun. And then scientists like myself that stood up and said, hold on a minute, I got problems with this. Oh, paid by the oil companies. Don't trust that guy.
What the international scientific community is saying is correct. There is no legitimate basis for denying it. Now, you hear the consensus argument. Here, well, the majority of scientists. What they're always talking about is, and originally the IPCC was about 3,600 scientists. It's now down to 2,500. That's the people they're talking about. But when you look at it, most of them are bureaucrats. They're not scientists at all. And very, very few of them are actual climate experts. Now, the consequences of that, and whether that's because of man-made CO2, I think are debatable. If CO2 is not causing the climate change, what is? What are the major driving factors? And um, so they're essentially the ones that are left out by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. It, it's unbelievable to me that they can come out and ignore the sun. I mean, everybody knows the sun goes in, it gets cool. You notice that, right? You have an eclipse, the temperature drops, and the birds start to get excited and so on. And, and uh, when you look at the, the seasonal changes with the sun, how you can suggest that the, the sun is not a factor is, is really quite remarkable. Giving us false scientific information is not going to clean up our environment. Speaking with a lot of, of promises and innuendo is not going to help clean up our environment. The globalists have co-opted the environmental movement. There are a lot of real environmental problems we face, like genetic engineering where they're splicing plants, animals, insects, you name it. Toxic waste dumping in the ocean. No one wants to breathe bad air or drink toxic water. But the global carbon tax has nothing to do with that. It's a tax literally on breathing. Go out on the street or talk to your friends, your neighbors, ask them, hey, should we ban dihydrogen monoxide? It's bad for the environment. The average person will sign your petition calling for the banning of water. That's right. Dihydrogen monoxide is water. It's the same thing with table salt, sodium chloride. And that's exactly what the establishment is doing with carbon dioxide. Ooh, dioxide. It has this scary sounding name. But the truth is, it's one of the four elements of life on this planet. Oxygen, carbon dioxide, water, and sunlight. And if the establishment can tax and list as a toxic waste one of those basic four building blocks of life, carbon dioxide, they can regulate and control every facet of our lives and shut down any businesses that aren't part of their new world order. The idea that carbon is a pollutant is essentially a way of saying that humanity is a disease or a cancer that ought to be wiped out, genocide. People have argued in this environmental coterie around Obama, around Holdren, the theoretician of de-development, who is now the science advisor of the White House, really the anti-science advisor. They've argued that babies are carbon monsters, carbon machines, and that every time you breathe out carbon dioxide, you're part of the pollution of the planet. This is an absolutely anti-human doctrine. They use the environmental movement to promote their real agenda, which is globalization and federalization and power. The advisor to Gordon Brown wants to exterminate one half of the population of the British Isles. Now that's something Hitler might have tried to do, or Stalin. They didn't succeed. Will Gordon Brown do it? You can read this in the statements of these lunatics. Radical environmentalists, fanatical Malthusians, tree huggers, whatever you want to call them. This is an ideology of genocide which can be documented exhaustively, ad nauseum, out of their own statements. When Gore said the science is settled, that raised red flags amongst the media and then also amongst a lot of other people that sort of knew that that wasn't true, other scientists, and started to look at it. And of course, the more they looked at it, the more they realized, um, no, science is never settled. What is coming down now is environmentalism is nothing but phony science. Nothing but phony science. And if we really believe in, in the environment, if we really believe in freedom, if we really believe in truth, we need to get some straight answers. 
Now, the Kyoto Agreement, of course, uh, was reached in the